Hello and welcome to part 5 of the DB Watercraft T-Rex Paddleboard Build Series. In this episode, we cover installing the fin box, closing in the bottom of the board, and fitting the foam panels to the rails. We start by fitting the fin box side support panels. These are stitched in place of cable ties much like everything else. One stitch in each corner is all you need to hold these in place temporarily. The T-Rex can take either an 8 inch or a 10 inch fin box. The position of the front support depends on what size fin box you use, so test fit the fin box into the slot to see where the front support needs to be positioned. Next, the front support can be simply held in place with a clamp while you apply glue to all of the fin box panel. Now once the glue has dried, the whole fin box slot needs to be filled with resin. However, before I do this, I'm going to install a block of polystyrene into the front of the slot. This will help reduce the amount of resin that it takes to fill the slot later on. Next, I'm filling the fin box slot with a slightly thickened epoxy resin. I'm filling it up to just a few millimeters above the bottom of the fin box. Now you may be wondering why I'm filling this entire slot with resin. Why not just glue the fin box in place? Some of the surfers among you may recognize why I'm doing this. On many older surfboards, the leg rope or leash is attached through a hole in the deck that extends all the way through to the back edge of the fin box. The hole essentially goes all the way through the board, and that's what I'm trying to do here. The solid block of resin allows me to drill a hole all the way through the board without any chance of letting water into the board. Now that we've filled the slot with resin, it's time to install the fin box. We want to leave four millimeters of the fin box sticking up above the supports. This is so that it fits flush against the plywood bottom when we come to install that later on. You will notice that as I push the fin box in, a lot of resin oozes out around the sides. This is normal and it means that the fin box will be glued in with a good seal around its edges, so no water can get in. However, I really should have taped this area off or covered it up with something to catch the mess. But it's no drama, we can clean that up later. Now that the fin box has been successfully installed, we need to coat all of the internal surfaces of the paddleboard with a sealer. This will prevent the plywood from being damaged by any water that does happen to make its way inside. You can use straight epoxy resin for this process, or even thin it out a little bit so that it's easier to apply. However, I find it easier to use a product called International Ebidure. This is a very thin epoxy resin based product which can just be brushed straight onto the surface and will soak nicely into the wood to protect it. Apply the sealer to all internal surfaces of the board, as well as the underside of the yet to be installed bottom panels. If using Evidure, it's best to do at least two coats, but probably even more, to ensure that the timber is well protected. Next up, it's time to start stitching together the bottom panels ready for installation. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have footage of this, however, it's the exact same process as stitching together all of the other panels. Now, before we get into installing the bottom, I just want to make you aware that the process for installing it was a little bit experimental. In some shops, you'll see fiberglass tape installed over the joins on the bottom panels. Please just ignore this. This was an experiment which didn't really work out and is not part of the final build process. With the bottom panels now stitched together, You'll see that I've laid them out over the bottom of the board and suspended them up on some buckets. This is so that I can drill some holes in the bottom panels and loop strings down around the longitudinal bulkheads and back out through the bottom. These strings will be used once we glue the bottom down to pull it down tight against the frames. With the bottom still suspended above the board, mix up some epoxy glue and spread it out along the bottom edge of the longitudinal bulkheads. Also spread it all around the edges of the board where the bottom meets the rails. Lower the bottom down onto the board, ensuring that it lines up correctly with the edges of the rails. 
Then start tightening the strings, working your way from the center of the board towards the back. You'll see here that I have a bottle of epoxy resin sitting on top of the board. This is just to help weigh the bottom down while I tie up the strings. With the strings fully tightened, you can apply masking tape around the edges of the board to help hold the bottom down to the rails. Once the glue is dry, you can then cut the strings and remove them from the board. Now that the bottom is fully attached, the next stage is to start adding the foam strips along the rails. I'm using Gorilla Glue to attach the foam, and the foam I'm using is actually a polyurethane based insulation foam. A proper boat building foam would be better, but good luck finding anyone who will sell it to you in small quantities. Simply squirted the Gorilla Glue onto the rails of the board, and then spread it out with a disposable brush. It was about this time that I realised I really should have bought a bigger disposable brush. I also really should have put down some plastic sheets on the floor to protect it. Once the glue has been applied, the foam panels can simply be taped onto the side of the board. Apply tape strips at regular intervals to prevent any gaps or voids in the foam. Repeat this process until you have foam all the way around the board. Keep adding more layers until you reach a thickness of around 40mm. It doesn't really matter what thickness the foam is that you use as long as the end thickness is at least 40mm. Now there are two main reasons that this board uses these foam rails. One is that they're much lighter than building equivalent curved rails out of timber. And secondly, they allow people to custom shape the rails to suit their own requirements. However, for those people who don't feel confident creating their own custom shape, the plans do come with a set of templates that help you to create a rail shape that works well for most riders in most conditions. I'll cover the shaping process later in this video. However, for now, let's get started with some preparation work on the rails to make the shaping process go a lot smoother. To do this, we'll use a longboard sander to help sand out any lumps and hollows out of the foam. Now, you can buy these longboard sanders, however, it's just as easy to make your own in a lot of cases. This one here is just made from a scrap of plywood and a piece of wood from an old broken oar. Failing that, you can use either a surform tool or a regular hand sander. Avoid using power sanders for this job, as they can make any lumps or hollows in the foam even worse. In boat building, we call this process fairing. When fairing the rails, it's important to keep the sander moving in long sweeping strokes. Don't keep sanding in one spot for too long. The rails now feared and ready to shape. I'm now using a wood filler to fill up any stitch holes in the plywood, as well as filling up any gaps between the foam and the, and the plywood rails.
How much time to sand back the filler we just applied, while also giving the whole board a light sand. I'm using a power sander, however you can also do this by hand. the board sanded, we can blow off the dust, stand back and admire how much this is looking like a finished board. However, we're not there yet. Next up is shaping the rails. For this job, I use a surform tool which is designed for shaping foam. Now, I'm not working to any templates here, I'm just freehanding it, however, you should stick to the templates if you're not quite sure. Using the surform tool, I create a chamfer along each edge of the rails, which I then come back with a sander later on to round off. Now that the rails have a chamfer on them, I'm coming back with a small hand sander using diagonal strokes to round them off. A similar process is used to shape the nose. I start with the surform tool again get the nose roughly into shape and then come back with a hand sander to finish it off. With the rails and the nose shaped, there's really not that much left to do. In the next video, we'll cover fiberglassing the board and applying the hot coat. In the meantime, this is about as much video editing as my poor little computer can handle. If you'd like to build your own pedal board or any of my other designs, visit my website jbwatercraft.com to download plans. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.